This is a smart dude right here, okay? This guy, like of all the power players I've had in here, he's the smartest guy we've had here. <laughs> this cat is One smart, day. okay? This cat, he, sooner or later, dude, he's gonna own the sandbox, he's gonna make the money, he's studying the right people, are you? Welcome to the Rainmaker series. You just heard Grant Cardone on Richard Wilson. Grant knows, Tony Robbins knows, and many other billionaires know Richard is a smart man. That is why ultra wealthy people look to him and the family office club to elevate their game, increase their investor savviness, and strengthen their network. Get better deal flow and propel your capital raising at the family office club and get it for $2,000 off by mentioning the Capital Razor Show at FamilyOffices.com. With that, here is Richard and the Rainmaker Series. Hello everybody, Richard C. Wilson, the $100 million Rainmaker Series. This is our 17 module mini series on advanced capital raising strategies and secrets. Hope you're enjoying it. This is episode number four on developing your compelling one-liner. This is really critical, but a lot of people don't have it. It costs absolutely nothing and every investor wants you to have it, but many people don't. And if we just look at what we've covered so far in these four modules, most people do not have an investor demographic they're targeting. Most people aren't aware of the three trust curves you need to move up to make it likely to close the deal. Most people don't customize their brand because they say to themselves, oh, I've already had a brand even though I know of a group that had $9 billion in asset center management with 500 clients and they redid their brand to have it actually mean something to their clients and they now manage over $30 billion. Um, and a lot of people don't have a one-liner. So if you just did those things, you'd have probably a pretty good advantage over your previous self before starting the series over, over a lot of your competition. And most of the ideas we give you in the 17 module series are things that we have learned while running the Family Office Club the last 16 years. And there are things that we go even deeper on within our workshops in the Family Office Club, um, but they cost almost nothing to put into place once you know about them and know um, how they exist and why they work. So what is the one-liner? It is communicating to somebody in the most concise way possible why they should push pause on their life because something came into their email inbox or you shook their hand at an event and in less than a sentence, you've made them lean forward and say, oh, pause everything I need to learn more about what you are doing. What you're doing sounds so interesting that I'm gonna stop whatever is on my busy to-do list for today and take a look at what you're doing. Because again, they have no requirement to respond to. It's like you're walking through the airport and then you try to grab somebody's arm as they're walking through the airport and say, hey, can you take a look at my one pager and see if you wanna invest in my hedge fund? Or hey, do you wanna invest in my startup FinTech company? Um, they're going to say, no, I'm, I'm busy here. Sorry, I got to catch my flight. Everybody is very, very busy with things that are just as important, if not more important than catching a flight when you're trying to raise capital from them, right? So just imagine that that is the bar you have to get past. Your deal flow, your structure, your branding, your one-liner has to be that good that it's going to interrupt their busy day. So what do you want to have in your one-liner? And I'll give you a whole bunch of examples. Um, first is you want to have tangible figures. What you don't want is an average statement that everyone in your industry says or could say. So if you've been around for 19 years and you've closed 10 transactions with 40 investors, you want to say exactly that. Otherwise, somebody who sees what you're doing could say, I want to compete with them. And they could start it in their mother-in-law's basement tomorrow and say the exact same one liner as you're saying. That doesn't do you justice. It hurts your ability to raise capital and you're not de-risking the transaction for somebody else. When you add value to a high value investor and you add value to them first, you de-risk the transaction. When it's crystal clear what you do and that it's credible, proven, well-established and hitting them between the eyes with potential value of being a fit, then they lean forward and now the transaction of investing their time to learn more has been de-risked. That's what this whole game is really on the front end. So you don't want it to be boring. You don't want it to be long-winded. It should not be a paragraph. You should be able to say it without taking a breath. Um, it should not be average and make sure it's compelling in two or three ways. Um, I'm really big on including hard numbers in it because that prevents somebody else from having a one-liner that sounds just like yours. So think about your assets under management, number of investors you have, number of properties, number of years in business, um, number of team members. 
Um, there's a, I own part of a bath salt manufacturing company that I invested in years ago. And, you know, we don't have a current capital raise going on for this company called uh, Better Bath, Better Body. Um, but if I was to make one up here on the spot, I would say that after nine years in business with 10 team members and 500 units of product shipped a day, that Better Bath, Better Body is a vertically integrated bath salt manufacturing business. That's a little long, it's a little clunky. That's version one. You'd want to refine that over 20 times and figure out how do I communicate to a potential investor that this is a nine-year-old business. Maybe I should mention that it has 4 million a year or 5 million a year in revenue. Um, but shipping 500 units a day shows some of the volume, showing 10 team members, et cetera, and that it's vertically integrated might get the interest of an investor. So that, that's an example of using some numbers and an example one-liner. Uh, another one would be from InvestorResidences.com and our real estate platform. We say our 100 property vacation rental fund acquires properties at steep discounts and doubles their sleeping capacity. So that talks about the 100 properties that we have there because they get high diversification across a lot of properties. Um, and then another example would be medical clinic capital. We, with equity and 24 medical practices doing 44 million a year in revenue, we provide minimally dilutive growth capital to high horsepower medical CEOs. Again, it's a little bit of a mouthful. Uh, we should probably shorten that up a little bit. And again, it's about getting version number 20, version number 40 out there. But a lot of people I speak to don't even have version number one. Or if they do, it has no numbers in it. They say things like, we have a best in class team with a lot of experience and world-class service. Or we provide great absolute returns with our lower middle market private equity fund. It's like, well, so does every other private equity fund in their mind, right? It doesn't set you apart at all. For the family office club, um, our one-liner is that our investor club connects you with 4,000 plus investors so you can close more deals through 15 live events per year. It's very clean, clear. You know the club has 15 live events. You know we have 4,000 investors in it um, and you get a basic idea for who we are and what we do. So I hope that provides you with a couple clear examples uh, of what to do and what not to do. Um, this costs absolutely nothing. If you think back again to the three trust curves, you have to think, what trust curve am I trying to move them up? You also have to think, is my brand sweating for me? If your brand is horrible, but your partner just refuses to change it and you are stuck with it till the end of time because you spent $19 at Vistaprint on your business cards and you already have the, the website for the brand that means nothing, and for some reason you're stuck with it, which I would argue you're not, you should, you should have them watch that module and change your brand probably if it doesn't mean anything. Um, but let's say you are stuck with that brand and you can't change it. Uh, well, you can have your one liner then carry more of the weight. If your brand name says medical clinic capital, then your one liner can be more dialed in. If your brand name says motel to apartment conversions, your one liner can talk more about how you do those conversions or share more of those numbers. Otherwise, if your brand name is Wilson Capital, then you have to explain to people you're investing in medical practices or ugly motels. And then that, that takes up space. It, it's an economy of words and getting that one liner really dialed in. So just take that in consideration that you need to know the investor demographic to dial in the one liner. You need to have a brand dialed in. Otherwise your one liner has to carry all the weight to explain what you do in a compelling two or three ways. And it's ultimately the most compelling if your investor demographic is something that by the very nature of that demographic, they're predisposed to want to give you capital and be excited and understand your investment, and then also have the branding, logo, words, and one-liner all dialed into that investor demographic, then you're gonna be perhaps twice as successful in converting brand new cold people to actually give you the time of day, pay attention, and engage with you and take a look at what you're doing. So think about how all of these tie together in Cascade. It's gonna continue this way through all 17 modules. If you stopped right now after these four modules and just implemented what I said and then come back here, I would hope that just doing that would give you an unfair advantage. And this is what makes running the Family Office Club exciting is that we're constantly learning how to do this better and better, constantly refining our one-liners, our approaches, how we use video, how we use investor influence persuasion strategies and advanced investment structures, et cetera. So um, I hope you enjoyed this module. This was module number four out of 17. 
The next module is on investor influence and persuasion. This is something that we are gonna cover in about seven minutes. We do a five and a half hour workshop on it. Most of these topics we could talk about for five and a half hours, but we're just gonna give you a Cliff Notes version just to open your mind to the level of depth of specialized knowledge that you could be acquiring in these niches. And we've learned a ton while going through this by you know, with billionaires.com, we've interviewed 22 billionaires. We're on a path to interview 100 billionaires on that website. We've had over 100 people speak on stage at our events who give a 10 minute talk on how they raised $100 million or more. And when I was on Grant Cardone's Power Player show, uh, when explaining our strategies, he said that these are some of the smartest ideas he's ever had from any of his interviewees on his podcast. So this is the type of stuff we're trying to then translate and get over to you in little snippets that are actionable. So I hope you're enjoying these modules and we'll see you over on module number five, Investor Influence and Persuasion. Thank you. No matter what you called your business, you're not trying to customize your brand to attract people that already like you and do business with you. You're trying to customize your brands and you reach out to a complete stranger who's very busy. They say, oh, that's just for me. Oh, that's interesting. That's related to what I know really well, but that's related to a niche that I've always been interested in getting access to, or that sounds unique and valuable. So this was module number three on branding. How we've learned this was a few different ways. I run the family office club. I've been running this investor club for 16 years. We posted 190 live events as of right now. We host 15 live events per year. And every quarter we host a big investor summit. This has 400 to 1400 people at every investor summit, 70 to 130 speakers on stage. And then every year I'm hosting a dozen workshops. And these workshops are on capital raising best practices, how to structure deals, how to prepare for due diligence on a deal, um, how to work with private investors more effectively, investor influence and persuasion. And each workshop is five and a half hours long. And we have 10 different topics that we do five and a half hour workshops on. So between running the Family Office Club, which you can learn more about if you'd like to um, join us and come to some of those live events, you can go to familyoffices.com. But also through pitchdex.com, we have created over 1,000 marketing assets for people who are raising capital. And we've done this for over 200 clients. And so we have learned through our own capital raises, through clients, through speakers on stage, well over a thousand speakers on stage every couple of years, honestly, um, what works when raising capital, what doesn't work. And the people who are struggling do a lot of things in common. The people who raise a lot of money every year do a lot of things in common, but they're not the same things. And so we try to identify those golden threads and share them with you through our workshops, through our books, through our YouTube channel, through the 17 module mini series. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed module number three here on branding. And our next module, number four, is gonna be on designing and scripting out your compelling one-liner for your investment offering and your company. So this is Richard Wilson, and thank you for joining us in this mini series, and I'll see you on module number four.